Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. And today I have a very interesting guest. He's Connor Kelly. He's a TikTok star, but he applies it to real estate. So he's getting business through social media, putting out content, building an audience. And I'm fascinated with entrepreneurs such as Connor using social media. And I'm happy to get into the show. So Connor, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Chris. I appreciate it. Happy to be here. Yeah, I know uh, we had connected through Podmatch, and I'm happy to get you on. Tell the audience your backstory, how you got started, why you chose TikTok, and we'll delve into it. Yeah, so I was actually a plumber. Was a plumber for about eight and a half years, almost nine years. Um, didn't like what I did there, and then uh, was always passionate about real estate. I had a couple of real estate investment properties. It seems like all these influencers that I followed just so happened to all be realtors. Like they all started in real estate. Now they were like full-time YouTube influencers and all that kind of stuff, right? So I was interested in becoming a realtor, but I also knew I wanted to be somewhat of an influencer or a thought leader to some extent, right? So when I got into real estate, I was doing what everybody does, cold calling, door knocking, all that stuff. It was going okay, but it's a lot of work. I didn't, I didn't really like it. So I thought, you know what? I need to build a personal brand. So in three to five years, I don't have to do this. So I started with TikTok because Gary V had been talking about TikTok since forever. Like if anybody listens to Gary V, that's all he talked about for like five years was like, used to be called Musical.ly, right? That's when he started talking about it. And uh, so I tried it because he was talking about how the reach on there was better than all the other platforms because of a supply demand imbalance. All these people were consuming content on TikTok, but there wasn't enough people actually creating it on that platform yet. So there was, it was really easy for your stuff to show up on other people's feeds. Well, luckily for me, like I had planned to, you know, get business from social media in three to five years, but the second video I put out went viral. It was a video of me talking about an investment property that I owned. A cat got like 150,000 views. And that's when I was like, okay, this is, this isn't a joke. You know what I mean? Like I was getting like a thousand, like 500 views on Instagram. That one went 150 K. And then a month later, the phone just started ringing and then uh, pretty much stopped all my cold outreach and just doubled down on social media, started a podcast, YouTube, started posting more on TikTok, started posting more on Instagram. And basically in that first year of being a realtor, I ended up closing 57 transactions, just a hundred percent off of social media. And, um, yeah, TikTok is, is amazing. Like if you're, if you're a local business, not using TikTok, you're leaving so much money on the table right now, Chris, because the way the algorithm works is it actually pushes your content out based on your IP address. So it'll show it to everybody in your IP address before it gets pushed out internationally. So for me being a realtor, it was like a massive billboard that I didn't have to pay for and people could see my personality. They connect with me. They actually can see my mannerisms and stuff as opposed to just my face on a billboard that costs like a couple thousand dollars a month. Right. So it's massive for, for local businesses. Yeah. I love that. And I really like social media is really democratized and it's, you know, allowed, you know, successful entrepreneurs such as yourself to build businesses from it. Um, it's, you know, it's fast, fabulous, you know, um, and I really like how you describe TikTok as a, um, you know, massive, you know, billboard in your backyard, you know, for free. <laughs> and, um, what about, um, so one thing I have a question about is, um, what do you like, you know, they had that hearing with, um, show and, um, but then after that there was nothing. So what, what do you think is going to happen to the platform or, um, whether it gets banned or not? Yeah. Um, well, my my gut feeling is it's probably not going to be banned, but even if, at least not in Canada anyways, where I'm at, but even if it does, I, I don't care because like, like Gary Vee was talking about, it's all based on supply and demand. Like everything in our economy is based on supply and demand, right? So what do you think is going to happen to all of that attention that was consuming content on TikTok? Where is it going to go? Like it has to go somewhere else, right? Like it's, it's like when the economy starts to go down and stocks tank and real estate tanks and everything starts tanking, the money doesn't disappear. It just goes into a different asset, right? So when all that attention is now gone from TikTok, where's it going to go? Like it's probably going to go to Instagram or it's going to go to YouTube shorts. Or it's going to go somewhere else, right? So you just capitalize 
on wherever it goes next, right? I mean, obviously it would suck. I have a following on TikTok. I'd rather not lose it. But if it does, I'm not too worried about it because I'll just capitalize on whatever the next thing is, right? So yeah, really this um, attention arbitrage and um, you know building a brand, what uh, it's called like social capital, social currency, you know, relationship capital. Um, very fascinating. Totally. I mean, I, I think like building a personal brand and these days is almost like, um, I didn't say this, actually Wes Watson came up with this, but he says it's like the new real estate, right? You're claiming your space in the universe because that economy is only going to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. There's only going to be more creators and more competition. It's only going to get harder and harder to get recognized, right? So you're you're almost claiming a piece of real estate right now by building that personal brand, right? Yeah. And uh, I love that. And, you know, as as job, as people transition away from this traditional idea of you, you have to look for a job to creating businesses, um, talk about Instagram as a massive retargeting ad. Uh, that's, that's really interesting. I I basically that's exactly what I use it for. I think you got you got you hit the whatever they the hammer on the head or whatever, whatever that same thing is. <laughs> uh, I think. For me, the most powerful thing on Instagram is the stories. It's not even so much the reels. The reels, they get decent reach. I might get the odd one goes like 5,000 plus or something like that if you're lucky, right? But it's the stories because you put out your stories every day. It's an inside look into your life so people can connect with you even more. Because even when you're putting out the TikToks and the reels, they see with you, they connect with you, but it's not really an inside scoop into your life. So the Instagram stories are the inside scoop into your life. But not only that, it gives people an opportunity to interact with you one-on-one. -on -one. They reply to something that you do on your story. And every time they do that, it's an opportunity to build that relationship, close somebody on a sale, whatever you want to do, right? And like for me, I had a whole bunch of people on my Instagram that are like, somebody you met at a party in 2009 that you haven't talked to for 14 years, but now suddenly you're the realtor of choice because they're seeing your stories every single day, right? So exactly that like you said, I use Instagram as a massive retargeting. It's almost like TikTok, the, uh, the top of funnel, that's where you get the most reach. And then if they like you and they're super interested in you, then they go to your Instagram and then you're just kind of funneling them down into the DMs and then it's a phone call and then that kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what, that's interesting. And so, you know, basically, um, would you consider yourself more of a real estate entrepreneur or would you really consider yourself more as a social media marketer entrepreneur? Damn, that's a good question, man. Um, honestly, I'm a lot more focused on building the social media and the presence on social media and the byproduct of that is that I get to sell real estate. But I think the personal brand and the growing the social media presence is so much more important than the real estate. With the social media presence, you have more impact. You get to change more people's lives. There's a lot more scalability and there's a lot more time freedom in that later on. So I'm most mostly now, which I, I didn't think this was going to happen, at least not this fast, but I'm mostly focused on building the social media. And because I'm working on that so hard, the byproduct of it is that I sell real estate. Yeah, it's interesting because I have a lot of um, colleagues, they um, they do affiliate, they do affiliate marketing. And, um, you know, basically they choose the courses, you know, who to, and then they're using social media to basically, but you you did it smarter, you did it real estate you know, with the transaction and the commission, but using social media, which is, you know, even bigger, you know, bigger commission, bigger, bigger paychecks, um, very, you know, higher very, ticket, exactly. higher ticket sales. Totally, totally. So, yeah, I mean, I didn't think it would go like that, but um, it's been, it's been good. I love it. Um, so one thing is, uh, one interesting thing is, um, so, you know, people in, in on this, you know, listening to this, they're like, oh, okay, so social media is very, really powerful. Which platform should I be on? Um, well, you know, what you kind of describe your your thought process on that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> some people have a great success on Instagram. Other people have great success on YouTube and other people have great success on TikTok. I think it really comes down to the type of person you are and the kind of content you want to put out. If I had to pick one platform and say, this is the best platform for getting business, it's going to be YouTube, 
But YouTube is a super, <laughs> super long-term thing. It requires so much work. It's insane. <laughs> There's so much competition on there. Like when I started doing YouTube's, my first like 50 videos got like 10 views, right? <laughs> so I think that they're all good for different things, right? I think yeah. Instagram is probably the best for somebody starting out. It just depends on what you're trying to do. If you want to close business like, like right now, like you need business right now, Instagram will get you business right away because you're going to, like I said, retarget all the people that you already know and all that stuff, right? But, but if you want to gain a following as quickly as possible, TikTok, right? And then if you're looking for a very sustainable long-term business, YouTube is the way to go, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. I love this idea of like short term, long term, um, using the platforms for different strategies in your business, especially marketing. Um, I, lo I love the way you think it's very, very smart, very strategic. And um, one thing is uh, also, um, I know this question, getting started on social media, uh, best tips. <laughs> Most people just say get started, but what are your thoughts? Yeah, I appreciate what, uh, <laughs> your kind words, by the way, Chris. Um, I think just do it, man. Like done is better than perfect. Like just post the freaking video, right? Everybody's so worried about people that they know and what they're going to think about them. And, and, you know, maybe that's why TikTok is a better way for you to start because all of your friends and stuff are on Instagram. So post on TikTok for a while until you get used to posting or whatever, right? But the reason why, I guess, people are going to hate on you. This is the way that I think about it. It's the reason why your friends and stuff hate on you is because everyone has a version of you in their head that they've created. And the second you start putting out content, suddenly that's incongruent with the version of you that they've made up in their head. So to them, they're going to think like, oh, Chris is being fake. He doesn't put out social media content. Now he's putting out social media content. He's being fake, right? But after you've been consistently doing that for like a month or two, they just recreate a new version of you in their head. And suddenly that's that's Chris to them now. And then there's really nothing to like talk crap about, right? So I would say just start doing it. You're going to have to reinvent yourself, right? Like the person you are today, if you want to get to where you're going, is going to have to change. Like you're going to have to change who you are. You have to kill the old version of yourself and become a new version to get to where you're going, right? So just start doing that now. Start it with social media. I love that. And, you know, you talked about this um, idea is like when, you know, when you first start out, you know, people are, at, you know, questioning you, but then like, what do you, what do they have to say now that you're, you know, you're a TikTok star, you know, you have a closing deals and you know very successful tell tell people why you've been successful in real estate while others have failed what strategies insights distinctions have you used yeah that's that's a good question i mean people definitely still talk crap for sure i don't think <laughs> i don't think you'll ever get get rid of that completely right but um i feel like there's definitely a, a lot more respect now that they see that what i've been doing and the length of time i've been doing it and the fact that i stay consistent at doing it right after first they hate you then they then they love you kind of thing right so but ultimately what it comes down to is it's uh it's not necessarily how i've done what i've done it's who i am right so i could teach you all these algorithm tricks and hashtags and this is how you do and post this time of day but none of it matters if you're not the right person to implement it right so what i've done for basically five years is focus on self-improvement and improving me right when you focus on you and you do the daily non-negotiables you have good habits i don't smoke drink nothing i have zero vices right and that allows me, when I speak on camera about something, people can feel it more because they know I'm actually doing what I talk about. And it's it's admirable because there are a lot of people out there that want to stop their bad habits but can't, right? So there's something admirable about that. And ultimately, if you want to be an, an influencer, people have to admire something about you, either the way you look or the way you talk or the way you are. Or they have to admire something, right? So the easiest way to do that if you're going to build a personal brand, focus on the person, right? This is why I've become successful is because I've just focused on me. And then the content is automatically better than it otherwise. You don't need to focus on all the algorithms and the edits and all of this stuff because the person in the video is better, right? Mm, yes. So 
and that uh, that might sound uh, I don't mean in like a conceited way or anything like that, but like focus on you, right? Go to the gym, get rid of your bad habits and make sure that you do not miss, do exactly what you need to do every day and never miss, right? Yeah, that's awesome. Um, how can people contact you, follow you and any um, parting words for the, the guests and the audience? Yeah, you can follow me at that agent Kelly, all one word, K E on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, wherever. Shoot me a DM if you enjoyed the episode. Other than that, I mean, something super generic, just face your fears, man. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Uh, really, you know, you talk about just like go out, going out there and really just getting in front of the camera or, you know, posting that, just posting it, just being consistent, you know, and, uh, you know, staying consistent. And uh, I love that. Um, uh, for for all the audience out there, um, Connor's resources will be in the links and show notes. And be sure to follow him on TikTok, Instagram, and his website. And re- will all be in the links in the show notes. And with that, thanks so much for coming on to the podcast. Of course, I appreciate it, Chris. Thanks for having me on, man.